In this segment, we're going to concentrate on calibration, bump checking, and even setting a calibration reminding uh, interval in the SensePoint XCD. First step, as always, is I'm going to place, place the magnet over the center check mark until the outer circle appears that allows me to enter into the maintenance menu. Uh, as we've discussed previously, if we have a password that's engaged, the first screen that we would be seeing here would be a, a request for the correct password to allow uh, the operator to get to this level. Um, first option that comes up is setting calibration. But as I said, the first step that we're going to make uh, for this segment is actually doing a bump check. Now, a bump check is actually just a confirmation of sensor performance. A calibration is actually setting the curve or changing the slope of the output. In the case of a bump check, what we want to do is apply a target gas, and we want the reading of our instrument uh, to be in the range uh, of tolerance, our acceptable tolerance range. In the case of this particular instrument, I've got an instrument that is calibrated for methane, uh, 0 to 100 percent LEL. I'm going to give it a, a apply a gas that is uh, 50 percent LEL. So what I would expect to see is the instrument output to go to 50 percent plus or minus uh, my acceptable tolerance. And if it falls into that range, uh, I can look at this and say that I've still got an operating sensor that's in calibration or in tolerance. You'll see on the display, the wrench is, uh, is flashing, telling us we're in maintenance mode. And you can also see what we're looking at here is the peak. So what we're tracing is the peak. So uh, I'm applying my gas. I'm looking at my value. What I want to see is what's the, what's the stabilizer, the high value that it got to. Again, as we talked, this should actually be looking for roughly 50% LEL. So in this case, uh, the instrument's moving up. It looks like it's stabilizing very close to 50%. Again, I could say that that is a calibrated sensor uh, and that it works. Uh, it's operating fine. I can turn the gas off. You can see that we're still displaying the peak value. Um, so as an operator, if I've got a paperwork requirement, uh, I've got to do some sort of uh, you know, documentation, I now have the ability to confirm that this particular, uh, particular sensor was bump checked. Uh, the peak reading was 51% LEL. Uh, on today's date, etc. To exit out of this peak reading, uh, I'm just going to engage the magnet, and you can now see that we've released the peak value because it's told me what my peak value was, and now the instrument's going to descend back into its uh, measuring range. If I w didn't like that value, so let's say uh, the sensor has drifted and I didn't get the, uh, the sensor within the tolerance that I wanted, my next step would be to actually go and do a calibration. So to enter the calibration menu, uh, we'd want to be able to exit out of the bump mode. Uh, we're going to board out of this and we're going to re-enter from a calibration. So I'm turning off this, uh, we'll call it the bump test function, and I'm going to scroll back over to a calibration. So I need to do a calibration. So I'm going to scroll back across to the option menus. Uh, these are things that we've gone through in previous, uh, previous discussions. I'm now at the point of setting the calibration. So I'm going to enter this function. The first step is to give it zero gas, and we show a, an empty tank. We scroll across for zero. Uh, we, it's looking for us to flow zero gas. If it's, uh, I'm flowing my zero gas and I'm reading a stable signal, what I'm going to do is give it a check mark. So it accepts the zero value and says that's what zero looks like. Next is going to be spanning. Do I want to span this uh, instrument? So I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to start applying my span gas uh, and enter that particular menu. It asks me what my range is, what my calibration gas range is. In this case, it's going to be 50% LEL uh, of methane. Uh, if I have a different cylinder, I can make that number whatever it needs to be in order to correctly calibrate my, my output, carbon monoxide or whatever my gas value is. Um, I'm going to enter that as my level, and then we're going to go through a process, and I'm going to watch the system as it gets to its value and looking for stable output. So it's going to reach a level, a threshold, and it will stabilize based on its existing calibration information. Once it gets to that stable level, and I'm comfortable that that's an acceptable, uh, an acceptable value, I'm simply going to check mark uh, again, enter that check mark, and that's going to then lock in, give me a pass or fail, but lock in the value and say this is the signal strength that's equivalent to 50% LEL. So as soon as I see stability uh, and I have a stable output, you can see how it's kind of plateauing here on 50%. Uh, I feel like I've got a solid uh, reproducible signal. 
I simply check mark it, accept it. It lets me know that that's acceptable. It's, it is, uh, uh, accepts that calibration. And then it goes into a purge. The idea of the purging cycle is that I'm in a maintenance mode, so I am uh, inhibiting my signal going off to my control system. What it's doing is it wants us right now to get the gas off, and the idea is we're going to go back into active reading. It doesn't want the gas to be still there. So you'll see in a second that it's going to see the decreasing values, and once it is acceptable and it sees that you're uh, in a purging mode, it'll actually go into a timeout function. So it'll start timing, uh, allowing you to, to count down um, so that it can say that it can go back into active reading. We'll just let this run. So let it run and it's going to purge. You'll, you'll edit this? Yeah. Okay. So let's wait for 30 seconds. I'm not sure if I like these as much as the X and X's. The video part. Are these going okay? Yeah. All right. You're going fine. Okay. It's the same thing as the X and X, which is why you're thinking it's it's different. Yeah. I mean, this is to me. I mean, with not being an instrument guy, yeah. it's the exact same thing. Very similar, just slightly different menus. Mm -hmm. Probably different applications and such. Yeah. But... Okay. Should we go here? Yep. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Okay. Now that the countdown uh, is complete, we're back into our calibration menu. Uh, either we'll automatically, if I walked away, we'd automatically go back into reading after a timing interval, um, or I can exit out of the menu uh, and go to uh, back into active reading. But what I want to do at this point, uh, we were talking about setting a calibration reminder interval. Um, again, some customers have policies where they want instruments to be calibrated at some interval. Um, what we allow you to do uh, is actually indicate or program in what that calendar interval is. Default from the factory comes in at 180 days, but if I wanted to change a policy and say I want my instrument to be calibrated uh, every 178 days, um, I can actually make that change on the instrument, simply scroll and index down to the value that I like, um, let's leave it at 177, and uh, the next step is going to be how do you want it communicated. So in this case, uh, the option here says LCD. So in 177 days, the display is going to come back and tell me you need a calibration. That's the reminder that way. Another option is I can have this thing go uh, to all output options or I can have no output options. Uh, so you've got the ability to have uh, a contact, uh, the ability to have it on display, all of the above or none to give you the indication at the timing interval that you select.